10, 9, ignition sequence start, 6. Hello, and welcome to Rocket Fuel, your daily update of everything that's happening in the Rocket Pool community. My name is Wack. Today is February 12th, and we've got a quick episode today, so let's get started here with some wonderful news out of our community. So here, Joe shared a picture of his new baby. So he says, Welp, I'm a dad again. For those of you who don't know, I guess you've been living under a rock or something. Joe is the smart node developer on the Rocket Pool team. And he's been a team member for a few years now. And this is Joe's second baby. Um, and um, the baby was due on, well, I think they were, they were planning to have a C-section on the 14th. But I guess the baby had other plans and decided to arrive a few days early. So the baby was born earlier today on February 12th, which is really wonderful. So congratulations, Joe. A huge, huge, huge shout out from all of us in the Rocket Pool community. And... Um, yeah, we're sending love to you and your family and your expanding family and we hope that everything goes well for you and mom and baby and um, everyone involved so um we're really happy and we're sending our love and i like that little thumbs up right there so yeah she she's a darling so we're, we're really happy for you all okay now to move on to some less happy news or slightly more happy news depending on how you want to look at it um, we're going to talk about the markets a little bit for a few minutes here. So today, Bitcoin broke a new um, a new local high. So this is a new cycle high for Bitcoin, where um, you know since it's bottomed um, last well November twenty twenty two now, um, you know hit fifteen thousand. Well, today it broke fifty thousand dollars. So the the Bitcoin chart is actually looking really really great right now, where you know it's been like waves up over time, and it looks like you know it's getting ready for a new bull market the last six seven months have just been green after green with some wicks here and there but um mostly you know up up and to the right so um the bitcoin chart is definitely looking really really positive and like you can see here you know this is a new now multi-year high um, since the last bull market basically i think the last time it was this high was in um 2022 um in April 2022, the last time it was this high. So it's been a whole long time since you know we've seen these prices. Uh, it's actually longer than that since it's been this high. It's the last time it was this high was in January 2020. No, sorry, December 2021, um, because it didn't quite reach those levels in um, April 2022. So you know the the Bitcoin chart is looking really healthy. It's looking really good, and the ETH chart is. You know it's doing its thing it's not amazing but it's not terrible um the ratio has been um kind of steady you know we've got a nice little pump around the eft news um a bitcoin etf etf news um and we didn't really um hold on to that too well and now we're kind of moving up but um we're not performing as strongly as we were against bitcoin uh, in eth terms so as you can see here you know the eth btc ratio got a really nice pump off a low uh, off a multi-year low even and then um and then they couldn't hold on to it so it's kind of been trending down since then with a few little waves up but nothing sustained sadly and um it looks like right now you know we're slowly trying to get back up but um we'll have to wait and see whether this move upwards will be a sustained move or not and um you know it seems like a lot of momentum is with bitcoin right now and everything else is just kind of um leading to bitcoin in a sense um and the way it kind of works is you know you get bitcoin moving and then the large alts kind of lead to bitcoin a little bit and then the smaller alts just bleed in general and of course rocket pool is one of those smaller alts so as you can see you know it had a really nice pump around the um, etf time as well um because the idea was you know the next etf was going to be eth and eth ecosystem was going to do really well because of that um, however, um, it's it's bled away all those gains and it's pretty much back where it was right before the the BTC ETF news was approved, um, and that is really disappointing. Like you know that that we haven't that we haven't kept up with the market um, in terms of price. You know over the last seven days, um, it's been a little bit up, but nothing nothing too amazing. Um, let me just get rid of these cookies. Um, sorry, the cookie notification. So in the last week, you know, it's up six percent. In the last month, it's literally flat, uh, like down zero point one percent. And sorry, the last two weeks, in the last month, it's down fifteen percent. 
because that's the ETF news that was kind of getting that hype. And then um, in the last one year, it's it's down um, it's down thirty eight percent. So that is basically right around the Binance listing time, and you're know, getting ready for the spot ETF. Sorry, the Ethereum um, upgrade Shanghai, and also the Atlas upgrade for Rocket Pool. So we were very much in that hype phase back then um and you know since then we're down 40 percent now so the market the market has been doing market things you know the hope is here that um bitcoin kind of consolidates at this higher level and then eth kind of moves to catch up and then the alts move to catch up with eth as well and hopefully outperform um that's the idea how it works out in practice of course no one knows um at these kind of times like what's happening in the community is that people are really disappointed they're really sad they're really um despondent and you know a lot of people did get in a year ago when the atlas and shanghai hype was at its peak and they're down badly now right they're down badly against eth they're down badly even in dollar terms um because eth of course has gone up so much in that time like over the last year and um rpl of course has gone down so it's down a good you know 60 percent against eth and 40 percent 40 percent against the us dollar so uh, Meek here had a nice post that I just want to read out for all of you. He says, "Yo, I hope everyone's having a beautiful day. It's been a crazy long journey for all of us, and it feels like we're finally getting out of the rut." So it just means the greater bull market, the bear market. And he says, "RPL may be struggling, but let's celebrate the wins where we can. The entire world is coming around to this asset class, and you all were smart enough to see it early. It sounds pithy, but there's a ton of dooming around here lately. But I think it's worth sharing some love." And I totally agree with Meek here. You know, like the the wider market might make you feel worse even though like you know it's a positive time for the crypto market because you've got big rpl bags or maybe even big eth bags and you see other coins going up more than eth has but um i think at this point you know um the despair feels really real and that you you just need to i guess i i can't give you know i'm not giving financial advice or anything like that but to hold on like i really do believe there's a lot of bullish catalyst coming for rocket pool in this next year or so and i've been that's why i'm holding rocket pool right like and of course you know everyone has a different um has a different um, stance and different perspective and you all know what you want to do with your portfolios more than i can tell you so um all i'm saying is you know don't make any rash decisions and even though you know things don't look so good right now it doesn't mean they won't get better soon hopefully and as you all know you know the usual catalyst that we've been talking about for a long time like you know um there's houston and then um the uh, uh, node set launching hopefully in a few months and then we've got the eth etf approval in may hopefully that goes through and then we've got a saturn one and saturn two upgrades saturn two will likely be renamed saturn one will likely have the rpip 30 stuff you know with the staking rewards rework um getting you know put into contract and then saturn two um probably early next year will have a huge tokenomics change for rocket pool so i know that's a long time to hold on to rocket pool and and to the rpl like rpl token into rocket pool ecosystem but hopefully you know you'll be rewarded for that um yeah <laughs> i'm sorry that you know things are things are not happy right now in terms like for rocket pool itself but all i can say is that you know hopefully things will get better and i'm not just you know saying that blindly i really do think that we have catalysts to make it better um over the next year so that's kind of that perspective um jasper had an interesting idea here uh, you sharing an interesting opinion he's saying as eth pumps the rpl eth ratio gets dragged by binance liquidity dominating on-chain liquidity we're more attached to the us dollar ratio than to eth ratio so what jasper here is trying to say is that binance is now the biggest um biggest venue where the rpl token is traded and they have a rpl usd pair not like well you know different stable coins usdt being the big one but they have a usd pair not an eth pair and because of that you know the the on-chain rpl eth liquidity that is the main source of liquidity is kind of getting dominated by the the binance liquidity and it's making the usd price more important than the eth price and the eth ratio so that is kind of um changing things for for the market in a sense because they're seeing rpl more in terms of usd than eth that can be good or bad it means that you know if if before the ratio got too high it might be that people were kind of like freaking out and selling but the price in usd is seems to be seen independently of the price to eth so if people on binance you know catch this um bullish 
um, bullish fever for rocket pools RPL, then it might be that you know RPL could potentially outperform what it might have. So that's that might be copium on my part, but um, that's kind of how I'm seeing things right now and how I'm kind of positioned for things is that um, you know I think the next year for rocket pool is going to be really good, and you know there will be moments that I'll sell at predefined targets, but um, I'm waiting for that, and I really do think that you know those targets of mine are going to hit. So let's see how it all works out okay talking um about the future of rocket pool here we had val running some numbers so invis has kind of been trolling and kind of been serious um the last week about n eth which is like node operator eth coming into rocket pool and he showed a graph and we covered this in rocket fuel last week where you know n eth was kind of flat going into the last the last year and what what he's been saying is basically you know since atlas and shanghai the amount of node operators that have been coming onto rocket pool have been kind of flat in fact maybe even like you know just up and down a little bit basically but very very narrow range of, like, like i showed you in the chart last week and he's saying that basically for rocket pool to grow we really need more node operators to come online and um that you know we should be focusing more on bringing more node operator eth online instead of just people who hold our eth and then Val actually did something really interesting here, which is what I was thinking as well, is, you know, he crunched the numbers between of how much our ETH can be lifted with the current amount of node operator ETH we have based on the new tokenomics that, you know, the community is working on. And he used a couple of different um, methodologies here, but they're, they're all methodologies that he's kind of presented data about in the past. So he says, I ran the curve models, uh, bond curve models, and he says, um, I think there's 260,000 um, node operator ETH, and that is matched with 591,000 um, ETH. I think is what that we're saying here. He's saying if we use the, if everyone went to LEB eight instead of 16 ETH pools, then we would have 942,000. So that already is a 50% increase in um, in the ETH there. And then he said if, then he ran his own. Um, he ran his own models for what the curves should look like with sub linear bonding and he says if you use the safer strategy that he has then the current amount of eth that is staked by node operators will be able to lift um 364 no sorry 3.64 million um eth into our eth if we went for the one of the more aggressive strategies the aggressive alternative strategies then that would lift um 5.2 million eth into our eth um which is nearly 10 times what we have right now and if we went like to the aggressive then that would be about the same really just a little bit more so those that just then comes down to you know what you want node operators to have as their first leb and second leb and so on but the result is that you know you would get a whole lot of um our eth lifting potential and like the rp the rocket pool a tvl to grow astronomically basically so val goes on to say if we get the matching eth from our ETH and total staked ETH didn't change at all. These would represent, uh, respectively, represent a dominant rocket pool dominance in terms of Ethereum staking of 2.8%. That's where we are now. Um, if everyone went to LEB8, then we'd have 4%. If anyone went to the safer suboptimal bonding, then we'd go to 13%. And if everyone went to the aggressive bonding, then we would go to 18% of all staked ETH, would be rocket pool ETH. Um, so of course that you know then brings the question you know the our ETH demand wouldn't be needed to bring that online, but the scope for growth there would be absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal, like really really big. So that I think is going to be really interesting to see how that works out and how all of that fits together with um, you know the growth of Rocket Pool. But um, that's that's this this is the kind of thing that I mean, right? Like the scope for um, staking with Rocket Pool growing a lot in the next year is I think really big so yeah that is that's pretty cool um yeah here in, in this of course you know kind of trolling says it all that doesn't mean shit if we can't grow node operator eth and val says no that literally means we can grow massively without increasing node operator eth and then he replies by saying you wouldn't get it <laughs> so of course but like you know in does have a good point like we really do need to bring more node operators online but um there's a whole lot of efficiencies that we already that the inefficiencies that are in place now that can be tweaked to make rocket pool way more efficient and that is going to be incredibly exciting for the protocol okay um again like next you know we were talking about the the 
big things are happening in this coming year. Well, we've got some news about Nordset this year. So people, like I said, you know, they've been um, here, like, you know, Bossy saying, you know, RPL tokens have been too disappointing for too long. So this has been the general sentiment that's kind of been going on the whole, the, like for the last while, but it feels like it's kind of reaching uh, a fever pitch again now, right? Like, you know, there's a lot of long-term holders are kind of expressing negativity as well, just like Bossy here. I'm not trying to show, point him out, but it's just, that's just how this conversation came about. So I said, um, like, this feels like a low. And if that's the case, then the good good things are ahead. And he said, you know, when Catalyst? And I said, Node Set is the next big one. So uh, Bossy said, you know when they're launching? And I said, I think Houston gets announced in Denver. So maybe a month after that will be Houston. And then Node Set maybe a month after that. However, you know, as Node Set gets mentioned, then Nick pops up and he says, there's no chance that it will be released in quarter one. He says, um, audits will come after the Houston release. And um, because he said audits in Houston release, and they said, I think in that case, then there'll be three to six months after Houston. And um, Nick said, actually, ideally two to three months after after Houston. So um, I said, that's wonderful. So <laughs> I said, I replied to Bossy saying, notice that gets seen here around or a bit less than six months, probably. So the way that I'm working that out is like, you know, we're three weeks away from um, Denver, East Denver, which is where I think the team will announce the Houston upgrade, maybe being a month or so after Denver. So let's just say that Den um, Houston happens at the end of March, which is six weeks away. And then Nick says two to three months after Houston uh, will will be note set. So let's just say three months. So that takes us to four and a half months, which will put us pretty much at um, the end of, well, June, maybe, no, May, sorry. April, May, yeah, maybe May or June, somewhere around there, which is a little bit later than, you know, I would have wanted, but because we need it now, but um, it looks like they're, they're hopefully going to put together a really good project, and um, I th I'm, I'm really, I'm really excited that they're going to do a lot to help Rocky Pool grow, um, just, you know, based on some of the things that I've been hearing and some of the things that I've heard people saying, um, I think it's going to be really, really cool to see how it all goes. So that is, um, you know, a note set update straight from Nick's mouth. Um, let's move on now to some eigenlayer news. I know I said that I won't really be covering it too much anymore, but here we are again. Anyway, um, you know, the community call happened last week and we talked about it a little bit on the show, but um, the recording for that is available now. So Jasper says that I recently had the pleasure of interviewing um, Kaido and Brianna of Eigenlayer for Rocket Pool Community Call to discuss my recent proposal for Rocket Pool and Eigenlayer integration. He says, if you missed it, you can listen now at the recording. So there's a YouTube link where you can go and listen. And Jasper's giving a bit of a summary of like the different questions that he covered. So he says, uh, does Eigenlayer need EIP 7002 forced exits to go live? If you get slashed on the beacon chain, you typically lose one ETH. What do you expect a typical slashing will cost on Eigenlayer? How big is the Eigen Labs team? How many engineers? Um, why is it safe for Eigenlayer to accept junior debt? Question, do AVSs work without D with DVT? If so, how? It says, are you working with other protocols with node operators like Stata, Lido, etc.? Uh, what's left for Eigenlayer um, to do to go to live on mainnet? Uh, when will the withdrawal delay be lifted? And will contracts be upgradable? If so, who can do it? And is there any delay? So those are some of the questions that Jasper was asked. So if you're curious about the answers to some of those questions, I'm not going to tell you now. It's time for you to pop over to the uh, to the YouTube video and listen to Jasper's answers for those questions. Okay, and next as well here, um, Brianna had an update saying that the um, restaking LSTs has been paused as we go get up, gear up for operator and eigen DA mainnet launch, and they have 2.45 million ETH restaked and ready to go for that. It says we're excited. She says that we're excited to further our collaboration with the vibrant community, driving forward infinite sum games. Stay tuned. So that's just a little announcement from Eigenlayer as well. If at all you are interested, and I know that I've been talking about Eigenlayer a lot recently, but this I think was like the last thing basically to cover about Eigenlayer for uh, the next few weeks until the vote goes live uh, because of the promising sentiment in the community that we want a PDAO vote about how to proceed with the Eigenlayer integration. Okay, finally, um, I'm I'm gonna kind of call out um, Shifrin here um, because um, he was basically um, Patches here was talking about some cats that he's looking after at the moment, and um, 
he says, if I don't make it to Denver, it's because of these tykes. And, um, and uh, Val says, we'll have to go arrest them for keeping you from your totally not your job. And he says, um, Patches, I need to, I'm going to need a grant from the GMC to invest into their college funds. And Schifrin replied by saying, the GMC only pays for dogs' college funds. We're an anti-cat establishment. So I'm calling uh, Schifrin out because that is patently not true. The GMC is very pro-cat and um, the GMC loves cats. So uh, <laughs> that was actually like a funny story that kind of went back and forth over the weekend where Patches decided that he was going to go on strike. And I'm supposed to be on strike as well now. So I guess this makes me a scab for making a rocket fuel episode and working for the GMC. So I'm sorry for scabbing. But um, normally, you know, I'm, I'm all about not being a scab and maintaining those union lines. So I'm sorry, Patches, for breaking the union lines. But um, yeah, and in the meantime, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call out Schiff. And just there, yeah, Waldorf responded here by saying, when do we get a better um, GMC admin? And Val, Val says, uh, you know, Patches, sorry, uh, Val said, when do we get a better GMC admin? Patches says, join my um, strike or forever be labeled a scab. And Val says, how, how is the strike working? What are our demands? And he says, no more a GMC work until Shifrin recants. So this rocket fuel technically is GMC work. So I really shouldn't uh, be doing this. But yeah, here I am doing it. So um, Shifrin put out this picture, this AI generated picture of, you know, his, his PFP um, and petting a cat. But I, I don't think that's good enough. And it wasn't. It wasn't approved by Val Heery. They said, no, you may try again. And then Shift never tried again. So <laughs> on that note, I'm going to end today's episode. Thank you all for watching, listening, and being part of the Rocket Fuel community. I hope you all had a lovely weekend, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye.